A minute 45 left. You trail, you're on the road. Field goal doesn't win it. One timeout. Who would you take, Gardner Minshew or Deshaun Watson? And I would say, I, I would take Gardner Minshew today. Would you take Baker Mayfield or Trevor Lawrence? I would take Baker Mayfield today. I don't care about your contract, your resume, your draft status. I don't care. Right now, I'd take Sam Darnold from what I've seen the first three weeks over a lot of quarterbacks who are viewed as better quarterbacks. And, and you know, it's almost how you judge friends. A friend will help you move. A great friend will help you move a body. I lived in Vegas. I'm not going to get into it. So there's a difference. And I judge it based on crisis. The all-time greats, Joe Montana, Brady, Elway, all did one thing in common. Some big, some small, some big arms, some mobile, not mobile. One thing in common. Brady, Mahomes, Elway. Great in crisis. A lot of guys are talented. They're not great in crisis. And so my top 10 quarterbacks, based on this premise, because that's what I'm paying for. I'm not paying for your resume. Jalen Hurts got a great resume. He turns the ball over too much. Can I trust him? And now he lost a great center. And now he doesn't have A.J. Brown. Would I trust him today on a drive? Not really. Was was Nick Sariani? Okay, so here we go. The king on this, he's the Elway. He is the Brady of his generation. It's Mahomes, let's not argue it. That 44-yard game-tying drive with 13 seconds left is the greatest last-second limited-time scarcity drive in the history of football, and it really is defining. I mean, he's really, especially in the early years when he had a high-powered offense, I mean, he trailed playoff games by two touchdowns. Nobody cared. Didn't change the way you attacked him. Number two, and I think his superpower is if you if you got to pick up yards down the field, best arm in the league, Josh Allen, also great scrambling. I think mobility matters a lot in that minute 45. Go to Mahomes' Super Bowl games. Mobility matters in these spots because stuff breaks down. Sometimes a Steve Spagnuolo is going to bring the house. Kirk Cousins, I love him. I don't get any mobility with him, Josh Allen, too. Joe Burrow, I get just enough mobility And I also think he got to a Super Bowl with road wins with an atrocious offensive line and was running for his life. That, to me, defined Burrow as less talent than maybe Mahomes, less physical wow than Allen, but his ability to win with bad old lines. And we don't know if Zach Taylor can coach puts him at three. One spot ahead of a guy that doesn't give me the mobility of Burrow, Matt Stafford. But Stafford leads all quarterbacks currently playing with 36 fourth quarter comebacks. He had another one Sunday. This is his superpower is like Mahomes, arm angles, throw from any platform. I don't get mobility, and if the pocket collapses, he's in trouble, but I put him four. I put Aaron Rodgers just a notch below because now Aaron is good, but I've never thought he's as great trailing as an Elway, Mahomes, Brady, or a Matt Stafford. I will two years, half his wins are game-winning drives, so he's gotten better at it. Uh, Number six, and now it gets tricky because I feel strongly about the first five, probably C.J. Stroud. Now, I don't have a big resume to work with, and he's had a couple stinkers. These young quarterbacks, Minnesota game, they have stinkers. They go sideways fast for these young quarterbacks. 75-yard game-winning drive, 40 seconds against the Bucs. Like, it's impressive. I'm sorry. Greg Cosell talks about it this week, last week. The kid's just different. I would say number seven, again, I don't have a huge resume, but I love Jordan Love. He had uh, three game-winning drives last year in his first full season as a starter. And in the playoffs, his first first time going to the playoffs, he had a 99 passer rating and 67% completion ratio with the youngest offensive team, youngest roster since the 1970 Buffalo Bills in the playoffs. I know it's young, but between LaFleur, the youth, his mobility, Now, he's going to have, again, he's going to throw some picks. He's more far than Aaron Rodgers. He's got some gunslinger in him, but I would put him seven. I will tell you, this is where Brock Purdy won me over last week. Last week was the proving point. No Christian McCaffrey, no Debo, no Kittle. Again, Stafford and McVay, he didn't win the game, but he won me over. I was like, wow. And by the way, Brock Purdy, highest fourth quarter passer rating in league history. That's something, folks. I, I don't know if it's Shanahan. That's the highest fourth quarter passer rating 
in the history of the league. I know, I know. He hasn't played a lot. He's played enough to know some of that's relevant. Number nine, I may criticize Dak, but he was 3-0 and in one-score games last year. Now, they get their teeth kicked in about four times a year. In the blowouts, he can be ugly, but in close games... Dak's a grown-up. Dak generally throws to the right guy. I don't think he has the biggest arm. He doesn't move around like Kyler Murray. But I just trust the IQ, the EQ. You know, the intangibles for Dak are better than the tangibles. But intangibles, Eli Manning was like that. I didn't love Eli. I loved him with a minute 40 to go. I loved him in Super Bowls. Dak's got some of that quality. I always trust Dak in tight spots. His limitations aren't his ability to maneuver late. Number 10, by a nose, Lamar Jackson over Jared Goff. Goff gives me no mobility. If the pocket breaks down, you're done. Now, Lamar hasn't been as successful as you think he has late, but it should be noted, in the last two minutes of his career, Lamar is a 120 passer rating. I, I hate to break it to you. He's good there. Now, I do not think... I do not think he throws from the pocket as well as an Aaron or a Stafford or a Mahomes um, and sometimes not as good as Dak. But I love his ability to just make stuff up. So I do give Josh Allen improvisation. Lamar Jackson, it does matter. Um, Jared Goff would be 11. Then you get into the Jalen Hurt stuff. But that the, these are the these are the guys. I don't care about resume, a, a playoff appearance. I don't care. Who do you trust? On the road, need a tutty, minute 45, one timeout, and facing a decent defense. I'm not saying you're facing Spags and the Chiefs, but you're facing a defense that can create a pass rush. This is, and I will say this with Aaron and Stafford, they may not move as well, but they are so good pre-snap that they can alleviate stuff. Whereas Jared Goff, I don't think moves as well as those two, and I don't think he's as good pre-snap. So there's my top 10, and yes, I have Purdy and Dak in there. So again, if this is not about arm, it's not about size, it's not about, it's just who do I trust? And what you'll see with these 10 guys, you mostly get grown-ups. There's 10, 10 for 10 grown-ups. Guys that love football, live football, obsessed by football, all in on football, not distracted by anything else. A lot of grown-ups here. And I know Aaron in the offseason goes to Egypt, but in the season, Aaron's buttoned up in the season. And that's what I really, you know, if you want to go to Costa Rica and hang out for a month and disappear, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I don't care about that stuff. Not that much. All right, Jay Mack, anything jump out at you? I went over to Pro Football Reference. I think you'd be surprised which quarterback led the NFL last year in game-winning drives in the fourth quarter overtime, and he is not in your top ten, and you did not mention him once. Who is it? Geno Smith topping Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts, who were tied at four. But if I said to you, <laughs> I just said to you, top of mind, there you give go. me the last great Gino Road fourth quarter comeback. Anything pop into Crickets. your head? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, no, so, right, again, right. stats and, you know, it's one thing at home to be beaten in Arizona. It, I, what Gino doesn't come top of mind is, yeah. now I will say, Gino is a very accurate quarterback. We just have to get over this. Yeah. That dude stands in the pocket and throws 73% darts. Yeah. I've been harder on Gino because I do think there's a ceiling with him. And 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 so I didn't mention him. I would have Purdy a little higher. Uh, I would have Stafford probably at two. I, um, there, they, I, when I showed this to the guys on the facility, they all went, hey, Stafford's 1A after yeah, Mahomes. Stafford's a man, dude. He's so good. I mean, come on. Yeah. J-Mac with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. All right. Uh, we glossed over Patrick Mahomes at the top of your list. Well, his top target for many years, Travis Kelsey, is off to an abysmal start. Colin, he has eight catches for 69. Everybody's favorite number. 69 yards, no touchdowns. Kelsey, though, was asked about it, and he's not worried about it because the only stat he cares about, winning. I've had a lot of catches in this league, man. I'm not worried about, you know, the catches and the yards and, and all of that. I have the most fun when I get the ball thrown my way. I mean, who does of course. It? execution? It, 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 has, it has everything to do with execution, just making sure that we're doing whatever we can to win these football games, man. And that's always going to be the goal. OK, so I talked to a league executive last night regarding this and his take was he had a great offseason. He is playing himself into great shape. 
and he'll probably do it. But the sense was, mm. don't see a lot of separation. He has been distracted. It's okay. Fine. But the, the, the takeaway was, when you looked at early film, is not a lot of separation. The, you don't see the juice and the speed. No. I, I don't see any of it. Now, let's, let's point out his age, Colin. So he is 30... Four right now. He's approaching that age when you start to think about retirement. Yeah, I think he's got two more good years. Tight ends age faster than receivers often because of the blocking and the injuries. He's had multiple surgeries. I went to Pro Football Reference just 